Fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. We have come to that point where we're going to talk about the best rackets of 2023. We're nearing the end of the year and uh, there are not going to be any more huge racket releases as far as I'm aware. So let's just get into this list. And it's pretty short. I really wanted to challenge myself and not give like 16 different options, uh, which I can do for some videos because I want to give you the option of finding the brand that you like because the brand is such a personal field players and I have made a video about how the brands differ uh, on this channel so you just search for, for brand and rackets and you will find it this year it's not a huge year for releases I would say some of the releases were very similar to what's been before and we don't see a lot of innovation in the racket space uh, that's uh, very very clear from this list and uh, which I will now get into first space I think there was some innovation here I really want to give it some applause actually the Wilson shift 99 there's also the 99 Pro with its 1820 rack pattern and its 315 gram. I prefer the lighter weight though. I think most players will be happier with the 300 gram 1620 pattern. Great spin and power racket, but still offers good feel, not too stiff. I think this racket really hit the sweet spot. And yes, it's gonna have a little bit of a launch, so it's not for players maybe with super flat, but it's a racket that feels very modern, has some new technology with the way it bends and so on. And I think it was a, a new line, a gutsy move from Wilson to release this. And I want to see more of this from also other brands. Like the, the, some of these releases this year, they're very good rackets, but they're a bit of safe bets. And uh, we'll get to that one next. But the shift, very good stick. Check it out if you haven't. Put your comments below if you have some feelings about it. And check my review if you haven't already. Next up is a, a small iteration, a small improvement of a previous racket that was still very good, the Radical MP. This has been my kind of match racket for this year overall. A little bit back and forth, obviously, in my life. You know how it is when I'm testing uh, all the rackets that come out pretty much. But the Radical MP kind of does most things well. There's no amazing feel, comfort or anything that stands out. But it has a good blend of everything. And I feel like this generation with the Oxetic actually was a pretty big improvement from the previous 360 plus. Yeah, it feels softer on the arm, it gives you a bit better feel, a bit better stability. I feel like the Oxetic tech, whatever it is in this one, really helps the racket perform better. So this has been my racket of choice for the year. And it's the one I feel most at home with. I don't see any huge upsides with either, but it's just there as a steady performer. So definitely has to be listed. I preferred it quite a bit over the Pro. The Pro felt like it had a smaller sweet spot. It was quite a bit tougher to use compared to the Radical MP. So MP, Radical, very good racket. I think most of you have tried this one, like it. Next up, the most recent release of these ones, the Yonex Percept 97. I've been playing with these rackets for quite a while and the one standout racket there is the 97. There are not many 97 screen rackets on the market and I feel like the Percept 97 does pretty much everything well. It has a more dampened feel than the other rackets I mentioned here, but also a more comfortable feel. It still provides some good power. And uh, the only issue I had was that my sample of this one was very much under spec in terms of swing weight, so I needed to beef it up. But once I did it, played great. Yeah, definitely one of my most favorite rackets to hit with. When I did the review, I, I felt like the 100 was maybe giving me a bit more of everything, so that's a, obviously an option. But for me, this is a bad rack overall in terms of control and still gives you some power. While the 100, I felt like it was a bit more difficult to control. Uh, there will also be some comments about the 100D, which is a great racket for some, but quite an extreme one with its very low low trajectory. So I feel like the 97 is the standout stick in the new Percept line, the one that will appeal to most players, to be honest. I know I usually recommend larger head sizes, but this one, if you want to play a smaller head size, is easier because of the isometric head shape, pretty lightweight, easy to swing. So for you, 97, 98 screen, players this one should be on the list it's a very good update i feel like it's not huge the same mold but i feel like the stability and feel is a bit improved similar to the radical like they keep the mold but they update some things in the playability that make it stand out then we have a little bit of a surprise it's the Paola pure aero rough origin the heaviest racket released in a long time it is uh, not super heavy in static weight but the swing weight is rafa style swing weight it's a 370 swing weight and uh, it's very very heavy to swing but when you impact the ball it's like hitting with a tank the ball really you know has huge penetration power spin from impacting this racket so it's a racket i had maybe the most fun with and i played probably the highest level tennis when i played well when i play badly then things start flying and it's difficult to maneuver but it's a, such a fun racket. It's a very gutsy release. I love that Bubble Up did this. I, I equally love how Wilson did it with the Pro Staff. 
97. I would like uh, now head to do it with the Novak uh, signature or other signature rackets, do it with their original specs and let people decide whether they like it or not, uh, instead of just endorsing and, and having a racket that's so vastly different from what they're actually using. So great uh, job, Babla. It's not exactly what Rafa's using compared to the Rafa racket I have in the office, but it is close enough and it's such a fun release and gets pe people get to understand how this play with this kind of crazy specification with heavy heavy swing weight and i think a lot of rec players really enjoyed it even if it might not become their match racket i would like to put a little bit of an outsider on this list and that's the head prestige classic 2.0 which is another gutsy move or fun move that uh, Similar to what Bavla did with the Rafa, this is a small target group. It's a very unique and different racket compared to everything else on the market right now. And that's why I think it's a good idea to have it on the market and it gives people the chance to actually try the Prestige Classic 600, but it's called now Prestige Classic 2.0. So that should be on this list of five rackets that are really stand out for me as those rackets that I want to kind of revisit and hit with again and I don't want to sell them. Uh, usually that's how I rank my rackets. I try everything. Sometimes I sell it, hand it back because it's a demo or something like that, but uh, some rackets I don't want to uh, sell or don't want to trade or whatever I'm doing. So, And these five rackets are the ones this year that stood out to me in a way that was very positive and that I want to keep playing with from time to time, although it might not be uh, you know, my steady tournament racket. I actually want to list six rackets. I completely forgot the Bubble Out Pure Aero 98, which was released early in the year. Uh, this racket is a racket that I keep playing with from time to time just power spin for a 98 pretty amazing for a 1620 also with the the nice launch and everything you need to put spin on the wall uh, to to get some control uh, kind of like Alcaraz and Rune and these guys that play with this racket uh, I do like this one more than the VS uh, I, there are no few guys I know that like the VS better they feel like it's a little bit more solid or I don't know maybe just like the cosmetic better but uh, for me, this one feels softer, better comfort, a bit more connected feel to me. I, I just prefer this racket, and uh, I did also prefer the, the 20, 2300 square inch Pure Arrow over the previous generation. So these are uh, uh, excellent rackets, the arrows, but the 98 is, is definitely on the list, so uh, I want to add that as well. Head did have solid releases all year. Gravity, better gravity than the previous generation, I felt, with better stability and feel, but... I mean, I'll mention it like this, but there was no real standout. You know, the, for a comfort racket, maybe the Gravity MP should be a standout with its 59 stiffness. Gravity Pro was excellent, but nothing I personally was that impressed by. Similar to the Pro Staff 97 from Wilson. Also a good release, but nothing quite standout there in, in terms of feel compared to the version 13. The Pro Staff X, I kind of liked, but it was a little bit flying, you know, and, and tough to, to dial in the... the the string bed, I think an 1820 there, or 1620 maybe even, would have uh, been a better choice. It wasn't quite enough to, to get it on this list. Similar to the new Prestigious, really like the Prestigious usually, but the, the change maybe was not quite enough uh, to convince me to put it on this list. Wilson Shift 99, great innovative release, really like it, bring something new to the table and also look great. Head Radical MP, Nothing really new, but still a substantial improvement over the predecessor. Great all-around racket for a lot of players that like control, but still has some power and some spin potential. Yonex Percept 97, similarly a great update, although not huge, and does most things well. Plays pretty generous for a 97 screen racket. Great for you control players that still want some forgiveness from your frames. Bubble up your air, rough origin. A heavy racket, a kind of unique spec on the market. Actually, what Rafa plays with, not 100%, but at least enough for players to really feel what it is to swing a Rafa stick around on a daily basis. Gutsy move, I like it. And the Prestige Classic 2.0, bringing back this legend, that's the right move. We have need more variety, more diversity on the racket market. I understand the, the manufacturers that they, they don't want to take huge risks, but I feel like some rackets are, are bound to be successes, and you need to take that risk and, and see how people react to it. And I felt like the Babala Rafa and the Prestige Classic 2.0 were those two kind of very different in, in ways, but also gives you uh, consumers, players out there a chance to play with either an old legend or a legend from a pro player. I hope 2024 will bring a bit more uniqueness in the releases, a bit more innovation, uh, maybe some new lines, maybe something quite different. 
Uh, Yonix did try with the V-Core line to make something uh, quite different from the previous generation. Wasn't a huge fan. I felt like they were a bit too too springy, a bit too lively. Uh, so it didn't really convince me. That's why why they didn't make the list this time around. And most releases were pretty safe bets that I don't find are exciting enough to bring on the list. But I had to bring the Radical because I think it's such a all-around great racket that I've been using myself. So it has to go on the list. If that's my favorite rackets of the year, let me know what, what yours are. And P.S. If you want to buy any of these rackets, check out my friends at Tennis Warehouse. There will be links in the description below. Helps Tennis Nerd a little bit to get a commission if you buy anything, whatever you want from these brands. Have a nice day now and don't forget to play some tennis.